Hey, this is Rennick. I'm 28 and female, and I'm married to Lucas for the last year. Lucas and I have known each other for uh, ever. We were in the same school and in the same grade, and although Lucas came from one of the most renowned families in town, he was extremely humble and kind. Unlike other rich boys, he was not a bully. Instead, he used to defend the ones cornered by the rich bullies. I still remember that sometimes his mother came to school for parent-teacher conferences, and she would ask Lucas's friends about their father's profession, just to check their financial background. She would then treat them according to their backgrounds, and I often heard her telling Lucas that he should only make friends with students of, quote, their standards. By her standards, she meant rich. However, Lucas was a different being. He didn't have the tantrums of a spoiled rich kid, no. He would often switch his lunchbox with ours because he said that the home-cooked food by mom was way better than what his servants used to cook. I come from a very humble background. My father's a lawyer, and while my mother is a teacher and a preschool nursery school teacher, my parents prioritized our education over lifestyles. My sister and I grew up living frugally, while attending one of the best schools and colleges. Lucas and I were classmates for years, and I don't remember when we became friends, but it was at our school's graduation day party that Lucas and I had our first kiss. That was the beginning of our relationship, you know. Later, I get a scholarship at a law college, and Lucas took up a business course, and his father wanted him to curb his education and join the family business, but... Lucas wanted to delay it as much as he could. In order to buy some time, he joined the business course. He was found more on my college campus than on his own. All of my friends and almost everyone in my class knew Lucas because he was always lurking around the campus. After my college degree, I joined a company as a legal advisor. On the other hand, Lucas had to join his father at his office because after college, he could not escape, well, the lifestyle. His parents never liked me because of my decent background, and his mother would always advise Lucas to date someone more rich, classy. I don't know if classiness comes from money, because clearly she was not classy despite her wealth. Needless to say, it was difficult for Lucas to convince his parents about our marriage. They were shocked to find out that our relationship lasted that long and passed the test of time. They were quick to label me as a gold digger, a freeloader, and what not. Of course, I got to know all these nicknames after my marriage. Before I said yes to the wedding, I had absolutely hundreds of discussions with Lucas regarding his parents, disagreements about our relationships, but... He ensured that he would stand by me in any given situation. Many times I thought about giving up on this relationship because of his parents, but Lucas was always able to convince me otherwise. Besides, I've known Lucas ever since we were children. He was never mean or rude. I felt terrible for letting go such a pure soul because of his evil parents. So, finally, I decided it was time to take a shot. A week before our wedding... My parents arranged a customary dinner for Lucas and his parents so that both families could get to know each other. I had crossed my fingers for most of the evening because I had known them for ages, and they were not very warm people. However, things did not turn out that bad. My father brought up the topic of legal battles in which companies are trapped, and for the rest of the evening, Lucas's father became distracted by that conversation. But towards the end, Lucas's mom said that there was one thing she wanted to straighten out before the wedding. She said that their family, i.e. the uh, Holtz, hold a reputation in town and I should ensure to hold up the legacy. She added that, unlike other families, their children do not leave their family house to live in a rented apartment. Hence, after our marriage, we should be living with the Holtz. They have a huge mansion at the center of town, which they proudly brag about to other people in town, especially elitist. The wedding was due in a week, so to avoid any last-minute disagreements, Lucas and I both agreed to it. Our wedding was a very private affair, and 
Most of the guests were from my side, and Lucas's parents honored us by showing up and being civil. That's it. I was actually scared that they might throw tantrums or pass mean comments to my parents during the wedding dinner, but gladly, they were shut. They were cold and guarded, but still better than being mean, however. The real problem started after our marriage. The moment I entered the Holtz mansion after my honeymoon, I sensed the upcoming thunder in my life. My mother-in-law, Emma, handed me a written manual containing the rules I had to follow in that house. It included all the do's and don'ts, some of which were funny and stupid while others were mean and outrageous. Lucas tried to push back on these said rules, but his mother was adamant that I, being the daughter-in-law of the family, should carry forward the tradition like she's been doing for oh so many years. I felt I was married to a royal British family, and it just felt like this was absolutely ridiculous. I tried hard to put a plastered smile on my face while, and Lucas and I were alone, he assured me that everything would be fine eventually, and I would be able to adjust to his family in no time. To be honest, I did not take those rules and regulations that seriously. I took it like a college manual where they just write for the sake of writing that, and I quote, We don't tolerate any explicit behavior between students on the campus. Whereas in real life, you find cozy couples at every corner of the college campus, and nobody bats an eye. It looks like I was living in a water bubble. Emma was serious about the rules, and I was supposed to wear only dresses. Uh, that too, and pastel colors, and no bright ones, and I should not be barefoot or wear flip-flops or sweatshirts in front of guests in the house. I should be dressed ladylike outside of my room. Even when going out, I should wear heels, never sneakers, and a proper formal dress. My mother-in-law even asked me to follow Kate Middleton so that I could earn a royal dress and etiquette from her. Really? Did she think herself to be Queen Elizabeth? At one point, I even could not help but murmur. Do I need to call you your highness? And she curled her lips at me in sarcasm and replied, That's Emma for you. I could not help but roll my eyes. Evidently, we did not get along, and I'm not saying that I'm a perfect being, but I tried my best not to disappoint them. But no matter what I do, I always fall short. Thankfully, Lucas and I are put into a different corner of the mansion than his parents otherwise. It would have been a nightmare for me. However, it's becoming seemingly suffocating for me to stay in this cage with each passing day. Emma calls herself a social lady and organizes a party for her elitist friends every now and then. Look, she doesn't go to work and does not lift a finger in the house because there is an army of helpers, so what else would she do? I'll tell you, that party is the meanest and most terrible one you will ever see, where every woman finds every opportunity to show off their new jewelry collection and look down upon others. Everyone just complains about everyone. I'm telling you, it's so fake. At first, I used to think Emma was nothing more than just a delusional woman. But after attending these parties, I did come to realize all of these women who call themselves upper class or elites, it's delusional. Maybe living in the 1950s era in their mind. I hated attending these parties because I'm fed up with Emma's constant eye-rolling at whatever I do. After the party, she would make a list of things I did wrong and how I should repeat them, never. So I stopped attending those parties, saying that I was busy at work. Lucas and I often laughed at these over wine and moved on, but now Emma's demanding something which is getting on my nerves. She's asking me to leave the job so that I can give my full attention to the Holt family traditions, and what is that tradition? Shallow parties? She insisted that if I was that motivated to work, I should join the business and save them a lawyer rather than work for others. The thing is, I don't want to lose my identity and join them. No matter how much I work or... How much talent that I have, I will always be reduced to Holt's daughter-in-law in their company. I told Emma that I would not leave my job 
and she turned ferocious ever since I refused to accept her decision. Lucas also feels trapped, and we both want to escape this situation. See, Lucas's parents are not evil enough that she would run and flee to another country overnight. But they're also not the civil person to share a roof with. I seriously don't know how to tackle this situation. So guys, I'm coming to you for some suggestions. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So it looks like OP's in a bit of a pickle with her significant other and also the in-laws. I do have three updates for you guys today. So let's go ahead, jump straight into update number one. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for daily videos. It supports the channel out a lot and I appreciate that. Here is your update. Oh, first of all, I should take back my word when I said that Lucas's parents are not that evil because indeed they are. So as I went ahead and mentioned, my mother-in-law, Emma, asked me to quit my job and concentrate on the house or join their business. But I had to put my foot down and said I did not want to leave my job because it was my identity. She laughed in my face and said, and I quote, there's no bigger identity for you than the daughter-in-law of the Holtz. I usually avoid getting into any tiffs with Emma, but she crossed her limits with this one. Although, politely, I gave her back saying, My father has raised me in a way that I should be known for my own identity and not be reduced to just someone's wife or some random family's daughter-in-law. Well, she got offended at the word random. She remarked that they were the Holtz and not random at all. She then started cursing her son for marrying me, saying that I, well, a commoner would never understand the nuances of a sophisticated family life, and I felt as if we were in some Harry Potter movie. And I was being ridiculed for being a muggle. Ah, funny, yeah. A month after the conversation, Lucas told me his father wanted to have a dinner together that weekend. Okay, here's the thing about dinner. It's not like our usual family, where you can have a meal with your parents in whatever manner you like. Oh no, if you want to have a meal with them, you better be prepared with the table manners set. And oh boy, the timing. For that reason, Lucas never prefers to share the dinner table with his parents, especially his father. In order to not mess things up, I ate the dinner before in my room and then joined them at the table just nibbling on the salad and fruits. I've seen this in a movie, but I don't remember which one, so I was cautious while having dinner. Mr. Holt said that Emma was having an issue because I did not give enough time to the house, so they wanted me to leave my job. It wasn't a suggestion like, Oh, why don't you just leave your job? It's better to quit your job. No, it came as more of a demand, an order, which was quit your job. I don't know that, like Emma, Mr. Holt was also so free to bat an eye over such a trivial matter as me going to work, but it seems like he was. He said that if people at my office got to know that I'm Holt's daughter-in-law, they would look down upon us. Really? Everyone at my office knew that I was married to the Holtz, and no one gave a darn about it. I wanted to say this loudly, but I kept it quiet. He further added that they had given me enough time, which was a year, to adjust to their etiquette of the mansion, but I was still faltering. So, it was high time for me to focus on the house. While leaving the table, he said I would have a week's time to wrap up my work at the office and bid them goodbye. I constantly gave a look to Lucas, who assured me that he would do something about it. Lucas did try to intervene and challenge the order, but I think listening is not normal at their household, and I was imagining that if it were my house, well, several plates and cutlery would have been subjected to my anger by then, and I stood up from the dinner table soon after Mr. Holt left. I did not even wait for Emma to finish her plate. Duck off with your table manners! I raced into my room, waiting for Lucas while he was sitting with his mother, trying to convince her otherwise. He and I both knew that it was Emma who had planted this idea in Mr. Holt's mind. 
when Lucas went into the room, I unleashed absolute anger on him. I mean, that poor soul was assured that he would talk to his father in the office. A week passed, and no one said anything while I continued to go to work, and just as the week ended, Emma knocked on my door and handed me an eviction notice. Really? Is that house a Buckingham Palace? She said that since I faltered in the meeting of the deadline of a week to quit my job, I should leave their mansion. Well, I was dumbfounded. I could never see this coming in my wildest dreams. The notice also had a list of things I did wrong that subjected me to the said punishment. I don't want to get into those details, but it was quite funny. She said I had 24 hours to vacate the house, so I started packing. I didn't even wait for Emma to leave and Lucas to arrive. I drew my suitcase and stuffed it with clothes right there in front of Emma. Well, Lucas finally arrived. He panicked to see the packed suitcases. I know I should have been angry yelling at him, but all I did was laugh. I cracked on his family's foolishness and delusions, and I showed him the eviction letter, which he did not find at all funny. He took the notice and rushed to his parents' room. Lucas has always been calm and composed, even with me, and he's never raised his voice, but that day he had lost his mind. I could hear him yelling at his parents, but could not get the hang of the conversation since their room was in the other section of the house. Ten minutes later, Lucas came back and started packing his stuff too. Emma followed him to our room, and she said that if he supported me that day, he would lose all inheritance from the Holtz. So basically, they wanted Lucas to get rid of me. But Lucas chose to abandon them instead, and... We were then asked to leave the house at that very moment since he chose to, well, go with his corrupted wife over his loyal, royal family. It was almost midnight by then, and we had left the house. We were not allowed to take anything that belonged to the Holtz, which meant Lucas could not carry any of his belongings because everything apparently belonged to his father. That also meant no car for us, and... We left with my belongings and walked down several miles before we, well, could not even find a taxi at the time, and our town is small, where roads are deserted by 8pm unlike New York City or the Bay Area. I told Lucas that I would call my friend or someone from my family to pick us up because we had three suitcases of my belongings, but he did not want to face anyone at that time. So. After walking for an hour, we finally found a hotel where we checked in. It's just a few days after that incident, and I'm still unable to wrap my head around it. Although, yes, I still have a job, that's not enough to build a life from scratch, and we're currently looking for a place to live. Meanwhile, Lucas is looking for a job, and I feel terrible for him because he has to go through all this just because he decided to marry me. Update number two. Hey guys, thank you for showing support for my post. I have an interesting update to say the least. A week into the situation, I get a call that my grandfather had passed. It was a shock to me because I was very close to him, you know. I rushed to my ancestral house, which was a little far from our place, and my life was going downstream. And this loss made it absolutely unbearable. However... A few days after the funeral, I get a call from my grandparents' lawyer that absolutely changed my life. He said my grandfather has willed a massive chunk of his property to me. So my ancestors had a vast land where corn, sugar cane, and other plants were harvested. They had industries and sugar mills to process these raw products and the finished ones. However, my father was much more interested in something a bit more, I don't know, different than continuing the legacy. He fled from his ancestral home to study law in town, and that's where he met my mother married and settled down. My grandfather had pledged not to see my father's face, but he melted when he saw me as a newborn Although my parents rarely visit our ancestral house because my grandfather was not on good terms with my dad, I was a regular visitor. My sister was a mama's girl, so she would not live without, well, our mom. 
but I used to spend my summers with them, and my grandmother passed just a few years back, and after that I used to spend as much time as possible with my grandfather on the weekends, holidays, New Year's Eve, etc. He had not only willed the million dollar estate to me, but the ancestral house as well, and Lucas and I were in absolute tears when the lawyer read the will to us. My grandfather thanked me for spending time with him when everyone else was so busy with their lives. He also expressed regret that he could not attend my wedding because of his ailing health. Lucas was also very close to my grandfather. He often used to accompany during the visits. And Lucas and I just went ahead and immediately went to the ancestral house the very next day where my grandfather's lawyer was supposed to read the will. Everyone, including my parents, was shocked that my grandfather had named me for the majority of his property, and I guess Jesus has his own way of pulling people out of misery. Suddenly, all my adversity turned into prosperity. We had a house and a flourishing business. Well, a week ago, we were homeless and disdainful for our future, and this happened. Everything seemed to change overnight, and Lucas cried like a baby that night because he had been very, very anxious the entire week after his parents abandoned him. We're planning to move on to my ancestral house and take over the estate business, as well as the industries and sugar mills in the next couple of weeks. I, too, plan to quit my job very, very soon. And, well, start my own legal consulting business there so that we could spend our lives in the midst of the nature? I'm sharing this update as a positive affirmation for everyone going through a rough patch in life. Hang in there, you guys. It will get a lot better. Update number three. Well, I thought that would be the end of it, but no, I have something more interesting to share with you guys. And Soon after the inheritance news came out, it spread in our small town like wildfire. We saw many unknown and unexpected guests right there at our door, congratulating us on our newfound wealth and literally urging us to have family ties with them. However, the shocker was the knocking of the Holtz. One morning when Lucas and I were relaxing in the front yard of my ancestral house, well, we saw a familiar car enter the premises, and as the car came closer, we were both shocked to see the Holtz inside driving it. We both stood up in shock, and Emma came running towards us and hugged us while Mr. Holt followed her, showering us with greetings, and I was so perplexed that I did not move or say a word when she hugged me. But when she tried to hug Lucas, he blocked her, asking them to, well, state the purpose of their visit. For the first time, I saw Mr. Holt without a plastered smile when he said, Ah, oh, why didn't you tell me that you were... A granddaughter of Mr. Alden. Neither did your father mention your grandfather. I could not help but force a smile and nod. Lucas interrupted him and asked him to leave, and Emma insisted that we sit and talk about it. She said she missed us and wanted us back in their mansion, but what brought them to us was pretty evident. Emma told Lucas that he should not be holding a grudge against his parents, and they were there just to take us back to the mansion. Lucas asked them to cut the crap and get to the point, and Mr. Holt sat them down on the chair and placed the lawn there, and said that since Lucas owns the industries and the mills, we should merge them with the Holtz because they also dealt in similar business. He said the merger would kill the competition for the Holtz and double the profits. It was not a request or advice, but basically an order. Holtz being Holtz, delusional. While I rolled my eyes at them, Lucas sat with a straight face. Once they were done, Lucas said that he was not 16 years of age anymore and that they could not force their order upon him. Lucas added that he was the one who owned those businesses and estate and it was all mine, not Lucas's. Wow, whom they undermined and ridiculed for a humble background. He said he was just a caretaker of my property, which badly offended the Holt, and they turned red in anger. Mr. Holt stood up and left without saying a word, swearing to destroy our business as he walked out the door. And Emma bit her tongue and called me a witch for manipulating her son uh, through some sort of spell. 
Well, see, I tell you, they gave me a Hogwarts vibe. <laughs> we definitely had the last laugh, though. <laughs>